So today we're going to do a very short video on efficiency, on how efficient the Tesla Model 3 is. Um, so what we're not going to talk about is um, range, although we will dabble into that and uh, let you know what the range of the vehicle is. But the main point of this uh, video is about efficiency. Now this is a Tesla Model 3. It's a 2020 long range, not a long range, a 2020 dual motor, which effectively makes it the long range version. Now, it was built in 2020 in Fremont. Now, the reason we know it was built in Fremont as opposed to China or Berlin, well, Berlin didn't exist then. And uh, if you look at the character on the, um, on the VIN, the 11th character says, starts with an F and that starts it stands for Fremont if it was in China it would start with a C and if it were Berlin future cars they would start with a B so we know it's a, a 2020 um, Fremont production and having looked around it it's you know it's in it's really well built there's um, there's very little wrong with it if anything um, other than the few dents that have been put on since it's been a courtesy car, of course. So let's just have a seat inside and have a look at how we're going to calculate the efficiency of this car. Alright. So. So we are currently in Edinburgh in the UK. Let me shut that door. We are currently in Edinburgh in the UK, um, so the temperature today, we are in the first week in August 2023. Um, uh, the first, uh, sorry, the first week in August 2023, the temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, now to convert that into Fahrenheit, all you do is you double it and you add uh, 30. Um, so that would be 42, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So in terms of uh, efficiency, what we're going to look at is the number of miles driven um, over um, the amount of energy used, the number of kilowatt hours used, and that'll give us a miles driven per kilowatt hour. Now, the car does give a unit uh, watt hours per mile. Now that's not that useful for most people because most people can't really relate to that and I, quite frankly it means not an awful lot to me but you can't compare it with other other vehicle manufacturers because they don't use that unit so what we're going to use is miles driven per kilowatt hour and that's an easy uh, calculation to make once we um once we finish our uh, road trip <laughs> not a road trip our test run rather so uh, let's go on with the test run um, and uh, we'll just, uh, we're going to do a little bit of city driving, then we're going to do a little bit of um, A class, which is roughly around 50, 60 miles an hour. Then we'll get onto the motorway with the maximum speed of 70 miles an hour. I'm not sure if we'll achieve 70 miles an hour or not, but uh, because of the time of day. Now I'm not sure if we'll achieve 70 miles an hour or not, but we'll get close to it, uh, but we're not going to exceed it. Um, so this test run will be roughly 100 miles thereabouts, there and back, same road there, same road back. Um, so it should give us a fair indication of what the average um, efficiency is. So uh, let's get on with this uh, road test. So time to get on our way. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, trip use the trip meter and uh, we're going to trip trip A um, how do you do that you touch that oh, you see if that how do you trip it though that's the thing uh, ah sorry it's down here it says trip A right there you go reset so that's at zero um, uh, miles and zero kilowatt hours energy used and obviously it gives us that unit of watt hours per mile um, it gives a unit watt hours per mile, so we'll just use that as our um, as our trip meter for today. Right, so let's get going. Car is started, so we just um, uplift. Oh, you have to put the pin in, so the pin is... There we go. They change the pin all the time, so the fact that you've seen it uh, means nothing really. Um, so the pin is in. 
and all we do is we uplift that, display changes to this, the speedometer comes on, the cameras come on, and we are good to go. Of course, I still have to put my seatbelt on, but don't worry, that'll happen before we leave the driveway. Right, okay, that's fine. So let's go, and next time you'll see me on the road um, heading out of Edinburgh. Uh, just for the purposes of, of this test, um, you'll always see when I'm filming the heater, the AC will be on, will be off, but evidently it will, will be on. The only reason I switched it off is during filming because it makes such a racket as you can hear in the background. So the, the AC is set to 20 degrees Celsius um, for this test. Because Generally speaking, most people have the AC on all the time. So during this test, we're going to drive as um, evenly as possible. No harsh acceleration, if possible. We've already done one, but uh, that was just to get through some lights. Uh, but uh, other than that, we're not going to do any harsh acceleration. We're going to drive as evenly as possible, um, just to get a higher result as possible, a most, most efficient a drive as possible so we'll see how we get on with that then so far we're less than a mile in as you can see um, so next time you see me I'll probably be rejoining the motorway so I've decided to change the route slightly instead of going out west towards Glasgow we're going to go north of Edinburgh over the uh, um, Queens Ferry crossing um, a couple of miles in as you can see uh, the usage is 208 watt hours per mile which is exceptionally good but over the last 30 miles on the chart you can see the usage has been 283 watt hours per mile which gives a projected range of 164 miles whereas the rated range is 190 miles so we're going to try and get to that 190 miles rather than the projected of 164 Still heading out of Edinburgh towards the fort, towards the Queen's Ferry crossing. Traffic is uh, quite uh, quite busy here. I mean, we're doing 40 miles an hour here. The speed limit's been reduced just recently, and we are going to stick to the speed limits here. We're not really going to exceed them, but as we go further up, the speed limit does it. The speed limit does increase to 50 miles an hour, and then once we're on the bridge, I think it's 70 miles an hour, and after that. It remains 70, so we'll see how we get on as we approach the bridge. So here we are just crossing over the um, Queen's Ferry crossing. Speed limit here is 70 miles an hour. And uh, let's see if we can overtake. Yeah, we can. 70 miles an hour. To your right there you can see the 4th Road Bridge, which is now virtually closed down other than for few types of traffic, usually just public buses I think. Uh, so this bridge was opened a couple of years ago um, because the fourth road bridge was falling apart. It's opened in opened at the right time I guess. So we're still heading north. Uh, we've done about eight miles so far and we've got an average energy usage of 246 watt hours per mile which is very good. Uh, but at the end of the journey, we'll convert all that into um, uh, kilowatt hours, or rather miles driven per kilowatt hour. So we are heading along the motorway, the M90, I believe. And uh, although we have uh, a top speed of 6 70 miles an hour available, we can't go more than 61 miles an hour because of the traffic. And that seems to be pretty normal at this time of day, we're about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so we're doing 63 miles an hour on a 70 road. Um, I don't think we're going to achieve much higher speeds than that. So what we'll do is we'll do another road test late in the evening, uh, when the roads are quieter, where we can achieve 70 miles an hour and see if there's a difference um, if in the amount of energy used. Obviously there will be, but it's just to see how much of a difference there will be. So we'll do that test later on in another video, but until then, carry on with this one. Um, head along, heading along the motorway now for another, I'd say another maybe 15 miles. 
and uh, then we'll have a, a fairly good uh, a test run there so that'll be 30 miles in total so as I said I'll join you back again on the return journey well it turns out I was wrong after all uh, we have achieved 70 miles an hour the traffic seems to have thinned out uh, so we'll extend the road test a bit further and uh, see what kind of uh, um, what kind of consumption we get later on um, so what we'll do we'll just uh, head in on a bit further out and maybe we might just get this uh, 100 mile round trip but I'm not sure but we'll see how we get on now a good safety feature on this car is the blind spot camera so if I put the indicator on to turn left the blind spot camera comes up on the, le on the screen to let you know if it's safe to turn in here we are, we are approaching Kinross now, so we're just going to turn off here and um, and stop at the services and do a turn around and uh, head back. So here we are at um, Kinross Motorway Services. They're actually uh, building some EV chargers here as well from GridServe so if you go back to the um, to the screen here and uh, we go to trips not trips it was here we are it's an interesting one so we've traveled 24 miles and 31 minutes and that's 250 watt hours per mile on average we have used and this shows you the topography of the road that we have traveled on so 23 miles would probably come to about here so that's where we would start and that's the topography of the road so it's been fairly up and down so certainly not even and certainly not flat as you would get in a, um, in a in a laboratory where they probably test these cars so let's work out how much uh, energy we have used so far so how we would do that is uh, we'd look at how much energy we've used to travel the 24 miles and how we do that is uh, first of all let's switch this AC off uh, so how we would do that we would do trips and the calculation is very simple so it's 24 miles traveled 6 kilowatt hours of energy used so that's simply 4 miles traveled for every kilowatt hour which is excellent efficiency. It is probably the highest efficiency of any electric car on the market right now. Um, to give you an example, I've just tested a Tesla Model X over a 5,000 mile run, and that gave an efficiency of roughly 3.15 miles traveled per kilowatt hour, and this one is four miles traveled per every kilowatt hour so far but we're going to head back into edinburgh and we'll get the final result then so i'll see you at uh, i'll see you on the road again once on our way to edinburgh so we're back on the road to edinburgh again um achieving 70 miles an hour as you can see in the top right hand corner of the screen um the road is clear so i think we'll have we'll, we'll be at this speed for quite some time probably until we reach the uh, Queen's Ferry Crossing when things will probably slow down. So I'll see you there at the Queen's Ferry Crossing shortly. So there you are, we're approaching the fourth, not the fourth, the Calarinian Crossing again. Um, the speed is now reduced to 56, 60 miles an hour. In fact, it's going to reduce to 50 in a moment. Um, so that's going to have a, it'll give us a, a, probably a better rating. Um, but uh, as I said, uh, I'll meet you once we finish this drive now um, in about a few minutes' time, and uh, we'll go over the figures, the final figures then. So, final part of the video. We have, I have arrived back home, and um, the Model Three and the Model Y um, and the new S and X. They give you a fair amount of um, data in terms of energy use and uh, it's worth looking at if you're interested in that kind of kind of thing so the first thing first things first um, the main event in terms of what was the efficiency of this run that we did 
So if we go to trips, the distance travelled was 49 miles, trip A. And we used 11 kilowatts of energy for that trip. An average consumption of 233 watt hours per mile. And that in um, a more useful unit of um, how many miles travelled per how many miles travelled per kilowatt hour is effectively 49 divided by 11 which comes to 4.45 miles per kilowatt hour on average over the 49 miles um, which is really quite staggering it is extremely high um, there's no doubt about that I mean I don't know a car that has that kind of efficiency, an electric car that gives you that kind of efficiency. Um, but what was the energy used on? And that's another um, tab that you can pick up here on this car, is that you can look at the cons at the drive tab. And this is the part of the journey back um, when I activated this. And this shows you over the last 21 miles only, and it shows how much energy was consumed by the battery for, for instance, battery conditioning. In this case, it was none because the temperature is quite high, it's 24 degrees, which is unseasonally high for Edinburgh. Um, 24 degrees is uh, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, climate control used, say, that reduced the range by 0.8 of a mile. Um, and uh, everything else, and elevation, change in elevation that uh, added 0.2 for mile on the second half of the journey. Everything else was 0.2 for mile added on as well. I'm not sure what everything else is, uh, but if you do know, please let me know in the notes below, on the comments below. So that is that, and also um, when you. Um also when you go to another screen here if I can find it yeah consumption screen so over the last 30 miles it used an average of 207 watt hours per mile and that gives this car a projection of 172 miles whereas the official uh, rated range is 146 so there you have it uh, the main thing the main takeaway from this is 4.45 um, miles per kilowatt hour is an exceptionally efficient car um, so as I said if you're looking for an electric car and efficiency is your uh, number one driver then certainly a Model 3 would be your choice so listen that's the end of this video um, we'll make more videos I've got a few more days with this car actually because my car doesn't come back for a couple more days so we'll do a few more uh, videos with the Model 3 that show this car in a bit more detail. Um, and uh, so please, uh, please subscribe to the channel and you can find them quite easily then. Um, so please subscribe, share and like this video. It would be very much appreciated. It does help. Um, and so until the next video, thank you very much. Bye.